Turkey, I stayed with that. I never want to leave that spot. That's how I've always am. Like, you don't have to kill a turkey to have a peaceful, quiet time in the woods to yourself. Mm-hmm. But I can't speak for you guys, but the days I am or the, the times I am lucky enough to be in that moment and have actually, you know, pulled that feet off, like, I don't want that feeling to leave. I I don't I don't want to just throw the turkey in the back of the vest or however you're going to transport him and just haul to the truck and go home and run in and start dusting baseboards. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I wait all year to do that. All year. Don't take it away from me. Mm-hmm. I will lay there. I got my whipped in South Carolina on, with this one turkey. I probably told y'all about it. I think yeah. I did. Yeah. I missed him, scared him. I mean, if you could screw him up, I screwed him up. When I finally crossed paths with him and that deal was over, I can't tell you how many hours I sat at that tree. It was a windy, really beautiful, clear day, you know, mid-April, something like that. I laid in that little bottom with him for hours. I did not want to pick him up and leave. And I know that's kind of weird. You're probably thinking, man, you may need to get some looked at or something, maybe some psychological mm-hmm. issue. Well, sure, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I would never deny that. But I'm just saying that that's how I feel with them. Uh, it's the same with cutting them up. You know, I I hate it when you got to rest them out and yeah. dismantle them, so to speak. It's, it's I don't know. It's Yeah, so that's, that's the worst part for me. When I've mm-hmm. got the legs and thighs and breast out of that turkey and I've cut the fan off if I'm going to do that. And I've got the beard off the bird. I've cut the heart out of it if I'm going to, if I want to eat that. And I've got that carcass and I'm getting ready to put it in the trash can. Or, you know, if I'm at the camp, I'm going to go put it, you know, behind a oak tree somewhere out there in the woods. It's just like, man, you know, the old saying of Ben Rogers Lee just really hits home. You know, you know, you're just not going to hear that bird again in the morning. And, you know, it's that sucks. That's the worst part of the whole game. Yeah. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know how much turkey hunting you watch, like on YouTube and stuff like that, because it seems like if you want to watch it, that's where you got to go. But I don't know about y'all, but even the moment you are watching the video and you know the turkey's getting ready to get shot, I mean, it's nothing that, like, I applaud. I mean, I don't, like, it's, it's really hard to explain because, like, Every day I get up, that's what I want to do. That's why I got the gun. That's why I got the shells, the whole nine yards. Yeah. But it's like once the trigger, I don't even know if the if the echo of the shot is even done echoing off the hills or wherever. Yeah, you're excited. You've just been fooling around with this devil for three hours, and he's drugged you over four ridges, and you're just physically and mentally exhausted. It feels good to win, but yeah. winning came at one hell of a price, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a very ironic, just confusing endeavor that we take on with this because it just doesn't make sense to me how much we love turkeys, what we're willing to do for them, um, and if you don't respect them, don't ever get near me. Don't you shouldn't be hunting them. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it's a really weird thing, and the older I get, the more I, I think about that aspect of the game. Don't get me wrong. If we suited up tomorrow morning and heard one gobble, we're going to go in there. We're going to do everything we can to, to kill it. I wish I could dial that back some. Like I, I wish I wasn't wired that way, so to speak, so much because I love it. But the minute it's over, I almost hate it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just really odd. It's it's um, And I think the longer you do it, the more you start to look at it. I mean, you got to think before you went in there and you threw that scratch box at him and – 10 of those pot calls you got in your vest, four box calls, and all that other crap you carry out there. I mean, he was just doing his thing, living life, enjoying the sunshine just like you are. Glad to be there. And uh, mm-hmm. in order for us to feel complete, we have to go kill him. I can't figure it out. I just can't. I can't figure it out. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. True. I will say the past three years I've gotten to where I used to, you know, after I cleaned the bird and He's just a shell of himself at that point. I'd just go chunk him in a ditch or whatever. But I have actually, it's kind of weird. I've taken the time the past couple of years to take what's left of him. And I go just put him nicely by like a tree and leave him there. And it's like, I feel a little better about it when I do that, I guess. He doesn't just feel like a sack of trash and throw it in the ditch. And, and I, I, I don't stand anywhere in life to tell another man to do anything, whether it be turkey on anything. But I wish everybody would do that. I mean, that's 
I just do. I mean, just, man, there's nothing better, you know, everything special, you know, everything that's alive and, and the woods and everything, even the songbirds. I know predators are a pain in the <laughs> They need, you know, they have problems, but, you know, man, it is what it is. But anybody that disrespects the turkey, whether it be alive, uh, dead, you know, anywhere in between, I mean, there's some videos out there that people will shoot a turkey and you can clearly tell the turkey's not dispatched completely and they're oh, sitting yeah. around talking the turkey's sitting over there you know he's completely immobile but he's far from dead mm -hmm. and that happens to all of us from time to time don't get me wrong but you you better get your butt in high gear and uh, i've heard of people you know doing the most absurd things to dispatch the turkey when there were far better options and i'm like oh no man there's just a lot of people out there hunting that, that are just how can you not love a gobbler how can you not yeah i mean it, it's 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 beyond spiritual for some of us, and, and you don't have to kill a turkey to to enjoy and experience these feelings and emotions that I'm trying to convey somewhat. Maybe it's just how we're wired, but I don't know how anyone, A, can casually hunt turkeys, B, cannot just submerse themselves in the sport, and C, just acquire in a short amount of time mostly an unbelievably unknown respect for that bird. I don't know. God, God's a very, you know, I'm not going to get religious here, but some crazy stuff in this world. But when, when the turkey was created, it just, I don't know. They're unbelievable, man. They're really cool. They yeah. are. Going to get no argument from either of these two guys on the show with you. Yeah, but a little too heavy. It's just, it's not a blood sport, nor should it ever be one. And, and, the, and the main focal point should not be about shooting a turkey in the head, you know, and all these slogans about, shooting them in the face and put your foot on their head and all this crazy stuff. I'm like, man, how tasteless can you be? You know, just, I don't know. But my expectations for anyone turkey hunting are way higher than they need to be, you know? Hmm. Well, I wish most folks had that expectation, and I think that'd be a better thing for the sport, to be honest. <laughs> That was awesome, buddy. That was awesome. That was cool. I'm just sad it's over. I'm surprised those birds weren't kind of, you know, wary of us. Because we walked right underneath them, practically, at one. The other one was a little bit farther back into the hardwoods. You know, I want to tell you something. Um, there's not a lot of real good opportunities that you have in life to do things like this with your own son, you know, had an opportunity to hunt together. That's one of the real fun things in life. We've been doing this for a lot of years. It seems like every time we get a chance to come out together, we always find a way to make things work. I think Tyler and I hunted together down here the first time when he was eight. And if you look behind me, there's a hill directly over there. So we uh, managed to harvest a bird and there was nothing more fun than watching an eight-year-old stumble down through the woods with a turkey that weighed just about as much as he did, hung over his shoulder. That's the first time I've ever really done that. Cool bird. Nice job. That was fun.